Hello everyone, um, welcome back to another day in the life of Jessie Bergy. I am, um, so you can, whoa, following. I'm only on a little stool. Um, so you can see probably from the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about my MS story. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna go through just the whole process, uh, all the different attacks I had, the symptoms, the tests I've done or like procedures um, and yeah just kind of tell my story I guess um, so yeah like some people may have heard of MS before some people may not have so um, I'll just start off and explain in basic terms what MS is so MS stands for multiple sclerosis and it is an autoimmune disease so what happens is you have an overproduction of a particular type of immune cells and they essentially they get like confused and they attack the myelin sheath so the myelin sheath is a protective barrier of your central nervous system so the central nervous system like involves like your brain and your spine so what happens is your yeah your immune cells attack the myelin sheath um and they get into your central nervous system so your immune cells aren't, aren't meant to be in there they're not they're not meant to pass the blood brain barrier so what they do is they attack then the nerve cells or the nerve fibers i'm not sure the exact terminology but what happens is the signal from your central nervous system to the other part of your body is slowed down or sometimes the signal is completely affected and it, the signal doesn't happen anymore. Um, so it is a progressive disease and if it is untreated, it causes like severe disability. Yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell, like just different types of MS. Um, the most po most common one, don't wanna say popular, uh, the most common one is relapse remitting MS. So what happens is you have that overproduction of your immune cells and it attacks the myelin sheath and it causes damage to the central nervous system and then it stops and you go into remission and then it happens again, you have another attack and then you go into remission and it keeps happening, it's like on and off, on and off. Um, and they call like those attacks either like relapses, flare-ups, episodes, there's a lot of different terminology but they all mean the same thing and um but then there is i think it's secondary and primary progressive they are if you if your relapse remitting ms isn't treated y you will more than likely go on to develop secondary and then on to primary and that's like that's when you know you've, you'll see a lot of damage done to your central nervous system um but the treatments for RRMS is it, it's trying to stop your MS progressing to secondary or and or primary um so yeah I think oh yeah so they don't really know what causes MS um it's very very like every single MS patient is different um and they don't actually know why people's immune systems do this like you, your immune system should not be attacking the myelin sheath it should not be passing the blood brain barrier um so yeah they they don't know why it happens but um we know that it's more common in women um and we know that they're like northern hemisphere so like ireland england norwegian countries they people in those countries are more likely to develop MS. Yeah, th there is a correlation between lack of vitamin D and MS. So that I, I'm not sure now that's potentially why people in like the Northern Hemisphere are more likely to develop it. But um, yeah, there is a correlation there. Um, so yeah, I think I've given the kind of basic information. Yeah, like 
this, what I'm about to say is literally what happened to me. This doesn't mean that every single person with MS has experienced the symptoms that I've had or they may have experienced what I have but on a different level or they may have ha happened in different like sequence of events. Um, every single person is different. But yeah, like I will go through all the symptoms I have but, or I had um, but in general it's like things like an attack can like affect your eyesight uh, like a lot of people will see like double vision you can see like black spots blurry vision um your limbs can go like really weak especially like your legs um pins and needles numbness uh dizziness balance problems you feel like you're falling over um but again like you might only have like one of those symptoms you might have all of those symptoms you might have them on like different severities or like different intensities so yeah i will i think i'm just gonna go through start from the beginning i guess so we were into march i woke up one day and the side of my face was numb so i actually thought that i had bit the side of my cheek and because my the, the right side of my tongue was also numb so i thought that i had bit either my tongue and or my cheek because like i do that in my sleep anyways but i thought i had done it to like an extreme level um so i kind of ignored it. i didn't think out of it it felt like i had been to the dentist it felt like i had gotten an anesthetic but it wasn't too bad that's why i kind of just ignored it um and about four days later it was just the numbness was getting more intense and it was beginning to like spread up my face and I remember at that stage, I um, I was kind of confused with just basic things. Like I was, I'm like in my job like four years. And um, so I'm familiar with what I, like well at that stage, the role that I was in, I was like familiar with what I would do every day. But I was getting like confused. I was just like, things weren't making sense. And I was like second guessing myself. I, it's just weird like I just genuinely felt confused with what I was doing and um, again just completely ignored it I because like when you work on shift you ch generally do feel rough a lot of the time it's not unusual to feel unwell it's not unusual to feel exhausted or just groggy so I just was like oh, I don't know what this is but um so then we are moving on to day this happened on a Saturday. So the following Wednesday, I was in on night shifts. And I remember I was slightly feeling unbalanced. It, and I thought I potentially had an ear infection because that is quite common with ear infections, but I didn't have any pain. And there was no other sign of infection other than I was kind of unbalanced. Again, kind of just ignored it. Um, so went home from that night shift, woke up the next afternoon. And I remember I got out of bed and I was walking towards the bathroom and I like completely lost my balance and like fell into the wall. But like, again, I was like, oh, it's just night shifts. Um, I felt like very unbalanced and kind of dizzy. Um, but it's not unusual to feel, I, I just thought like, oh, I just need to have a coffee and I need to have something to eat and everything will be fine. But I was beginning to feel like a little bit nauseous, not to the point where I actually was going to get sick, but it was the, the dizziness and the, it, it was more so like I felt like I was falling to the right side. So naturally I still went to work that night um, and I was like, right, I'll go in and I'll have my dinner. Um, and I just, I knew something wasn't right, so I, I went home sick that night and I made an appointment with my GP and they did the following day sorry and they um they were like oh this is potentially shingles go to A&E so I was like yeah that's fine I mean obviously I don't want shingles but at least I kind of had a potential answer to what was going on so I went to A&E did the you know your blood your ECG your scans and they were like yeah it seems fine um 
it's probably just a bit of Bell's, pe Bell's palsy. And I was just like, I've never had that before. And like, I had no drooping on the side of my face or anything like that. Now I know not every single person has to have drooping. Um, but I was just kind of like, okay, uh, maybe it'll just, you know, pass or whatever. Um, but my GP wanted to find out what the story was. So I had made a follow-up appointment with my GP. But then the numbness was beginning to spread down my arm at this stage. And I was walking, like my walking was affected. I was, I felt like I didn't have the strength in my right leg. And he was just like, no, no, no. We're like, you need to see a neurologist. So went back into A&E. And I did meet a neurologist that day and um, I had noticed as well over those few days between the two A&E appointments that I was, when I was walking my dog, I was being pulled. Like I just felt like I didn't have the strength or I just didn't have the balance to stay like this. I was just constantly like walking like that. Um, so they do like different... Uh, assessments on you and it, it's obviously like testing the different nerve pathways if that's the right term um, and they're like right yeah we do need to do MRIs and he came back and he's like yeah we have an appointment in two weeks so can you go to that and I was just like okay um, apparently I was relieved because I was like right I get to go home and like at that stage yeah I was unbalanced I my I was going numb on my lower part of my body um, but I was some I didn't know what was to come um, and I just I was just happy to be able to go home I went home um, and it was kind of after though like the next couple of days so actually first of all the next like two days my symptoms got worse in terms of my arm was getting very weak at this stage but then all of a sudden I got this massive boost of energy uh, and strength and I was beginning to walk like straight at this stage so I was like oh I'm on the mend fantastic um, but then by the end of that week oh that's when things just went like really pear-shaped um, I woke up on the Sunday and I felt really foggy in my head it didn't feel like a headache, like I hadn't got pain, but again, I was very, I felt, I just felt really sick. I was just like, I took painkillers anyways, because I was just like, oh, this is potentially the beginning of a, a headache. And I kind of felt nauseous, but I, I, I didn't know what I was. Um, and then that late, later that afternoon and going into the evening, I actually lost hearing in my right ear. And it was just like, like I couldn't hear anything outside, like in that right ear at all. Um, it was horrible. Like even when I was speaking, my voice sounded like really far away. Um, and then that evening I was just like, I didn't even really want to eat anything. I was just kind of, the thoughts of food, I was just like, not, I wasn't feeling it at all. So I was just kind of like, I'm gonna go to bed and try to sleep this off. And I'd say from about 10 that night till about 2 in the morning was the worst pain I've ever felt in my head. It was just this sharp shooting pain over my right eye. And like I just I couldn't get any form of relief from it. Like no matter how long the time had passed, like it just wasn't going away. Even like moving my head, it was it was actually sore. It was begin to get like really painful if I was even like lifting it and like lying on the other side I wanted to sit up I wanted to, to like I, I didn't I couldn't do anything I, I wanted to take a drink of water and I just couldn't I'm, what like I the pain was so bad I needed to cry but I actually just couldn't get the tears out because it was so painful that it was just too much the energy required to actually cry was far too much with the level of pain that I was in um, and my man came in and was talking to me and I actually couldn't get the words out of my mouth I was just like I, like it was obviously a migraine but I was getting sensitive to light I was getting sensitive to sound um, oh, it, was just, it was horrendous but uh, 
yeah, I'd say from about like between two and three o'clock, I was able to actually fall asleep. Um, and then the next day I woke up and I was just, I was lying in my bed and I was so, I felt so nauseous. I was just like, oh my God, why am I so dizzy? And I was like, right, I'm just gonna continue to try to fall back asleep. I'll wake up and it'll be gone. And I kept falling asleep and waking back up and the, like it wasn't going away. I was just really motion sickness. And every time I'd like, I was just like, right, I'm gonna stay in bed all day. And then every time I'd get up to go to the toilet, I'd get back into bed, I'd, I'd vomit. But uh, so I was like, right, whatever. I'll just try to sleep it off. Um, and then the, the, the following day that like things got really, really bad. Um, I was like a completely lost like control of my eyes. I was seeing double figures. Everything in the room was spinning at this stage. I couldn't, I literally couldn't move any part of my body. Like I, the only time I got relief is if I lay on my left side, like completely flat. And I couldn't even drink water at that stage because that was, that was coming up. So I rang my GP and I was asking, I thought it was potentially just like a bit of vertigo. Um, and he was like, you know, I was over Zoom and he seen the state I was in, like I couldn't open my eyes because the brightness of the laptop was like so painful. And like my speech was slowing down. I had a stutter, I just, he was just like, no, like you, you need to go to the hospital. He was like, I don't think it's just like, vertigo like there's something else going on there and um so we rang an ambulance and i remember at that stage like I, I wasn't even able to walk um so i went into a and e again and I just felt like that people didn't understand the level of like sickness that I was feeling. I just, and like, I just, I don't know, like to, for everything to be spinning in the room, like I couldn't open my eyes. The sounds were so painful. I kept vomiting because I was so dizzy and I was so dehydrated and it took them like eight hours to actually even come and assess me and he was like okay I need you to come into the assessment area and I was like I actually can't walk I can't get out of this bed he's like okay 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 and he gave me some like anti-sickness pain relief and uh, some fluids like just to keep me hydrated and afterwards it was about six in the morning he was like are you feeling much better now and I was just like no like I was just like there's two of everything in this room and it's like spinning and um, he got me a wheelchair and brought me into the assessment area. Oh, fuck. Uh, he, like, he was carrying out the usual, like, assessments that they do if they think it's a potential, like, MS or a neurological disease. And I, I heard him on the phone to the neurologist that would be on call. And he was just like, this is the worst ataxia that I've ever seen in like 10, 15 years. Um, and he was like, right, you just need to stay here. And he was like, the neurologist is going to come down. She's going to assess you. So I was like, okay, that's fine. But because I was now in the assessment area, my bed was taken in like the kind of A&E area. So I was just waiting there for the neurologist to come down. Um, and one of the kind of porters came around. She was like, "You can't be in here. You need to. You need to get out and go back to your chair." And I was just like, "I can't. I can't walk." I was just like, um, "I was like, I'm really, really not well." Um, and she's like, oh, "All right, I'll get you a wheelchair and I'll bring you out to your chair." I was like, "No, I like. I need a bed." I was like, "I need to lie down." I was just like, everything in the room is spinning. I was just like, I like. I can't stop getting sick if I sit up. It's like, I'm just, it, it, it's like horrendous. It's like being on the wall, so it's, it just, it was never ending. And she literally had no time for it. And I was put in the wheelchair and brought out and I had to like sit on a chair. And like, 
I just like was bawling my eyes out because obviously at this stage yes I was very ill but I was also extremely tired like it was the next morning it was like nine o'clock in the morning and I hadn't slept and the noise of Amy was so loud it was so bright it just it was so nauseous um and it just so happened that the neurologist came down at that stage as well so I was brought straight back to the assessment area and she had a look at my eyes and they were literally just moving in circles she was like they're literally like washing machines like I had no control over them whatsoever but um she she organized my MRI and so I went and did that at like 11 that morning and then I was brought back to A&E but like the second I was moving in that wheelchair and I was brought back to A&E I was getting sick and I remember <laughs> I remember I had gone like I vomited so much into those sick bags it was literally like <laughs> it was at like the top and I was just like to someone obviously like a nurse because I could like I could obviously sense if someone was near me like the the shadow of someone was like beside me and I was just like I really need another sick bag and can you please like I, I like obviously it's a horrible thing to get rid of someone else's sick but like I was like can you please put this in the bin she's like uh, no there's a there's a there's a bin over there and I was like like I like I was like I'm not able to walk and she's like yeah well like there's ju it's just there and I was just like again I was just bawling my eyes out and I was just like right like obviously it's it's not a nice thing to get you know pick someone else's sick out like in a bag and put it in a bin so I was just like right I'll try walk over and then like a nurse came run over and she's like Jessica what are you doing she's like you're too unsteady on your feet she was like you're gonna fall over give me that and I was just like she was like what are you doing and I was like I just I was like no one will take my sick bag and she was just like oh I'll take it for you and then I was just like trying to get back to my seat it was literally my legs were like I don't know if you've ever seen like a newborn giraffe trying to walk it was just like I had n like no strength I had no coordination it was they were just like jelly um so I was put on fluids then and then I was being kept in hospital but there wasn't a bed ready for me <laughs> so I was brought up to the day ward and uh they just left me there for like I say about two three hours until the bed was ready uh but like it was a they had to like bring me there because it was like a pitch black room there was it was completely quiet and there was like she needs to sleep so I was kept in for a week so my consultant came to me and gave me the results of my MRI and said that I had a lesion on the back of my brain or is it it's my brain stem I think so it's on the cerebellum so all the symptoms that I had coordination balance issues dizziness my speech they were all very relevant to the lesion that I had he was like right we need to do a scan of your spine and we need to do a spinal tap so for anyone that doesn't know what a spinal tap is it's like this massive needle that goes into the into your spine and it takes the cerebro cerebrospinal fluid <laughs> that little volume of fluid that they take gets sent off and they're testing for oligoclonal bands so if you have oligoclonal bands they are like your immune cells that have passed the blood brain barrier and they're in your cerebrospinal fluid or in like the central nervous system <laughs> um so that would be an indication that you have ms um so yeah i wasn't they weren't able to give me any form of like treatment until i had done the other scan and the spinal tap so because it's like they're so busy in there that i actually i had gone in on a tuesday night and i didn't get my steroids until the friday just by the time like because there is other people waiting to get MRIs as well um so yeah I got my I got three days of high dose steroids and that reduces the inflammation it helps you get over the attack quicker it's not like a long-term fix it's like a short-term fix um 
oh my god i was wired like if anyone's had those steroids like you know you just you cannot sleep like you'd literally fall asleep about five or six in the morning but um yeah that whole time in hospital was just horrific anyways fuck my battery's dying again so i so i got discharged from hospital at that stage and i got all my results in three months time so they look at your blood they look at your scans your oligoclonal bands or like the cerebrospinal fluid and they assess it to try and you know give a diagnosis so i had one lesion and i have one known episode at that stage so i had no recollection of anything ever like this happening before and i had no my oligoclonal band result was atypical so they can't diagnose you with ms at that stage at that stage i had clinically isolated syndrome which is like one lesion one episode it 80 percent of pe people that have clinically isolated syndrome go on to develop ms and 20 percent don't so i was like really really hoping i was in that 20 percent um but the reality was the odds were against me so yeah that took me about two months in total to get over that attack to be able to you know go out and walk on my own again to be able to like actually speak properly to be able to hold a conversation to everything the numbness to go away my eyesight to return to normal it was just it was long um and i remember at that stage i just couldn't stop crying fast forward to june i had gotten my results one in, I think it was like the 8th of June or something and I was kind of feeling so hopeful because I hadn't got any other lesions I had only one episode my oligoclonal bands were atypical so I was like maybe I will be in that 20% and I'd say a couple of hours after that phone call the back of my head went went numb on, except this side was on the left side this time it was on the left side and I just was like oh my fucking god here we go again and I knew it was different this time because it's on the other side. Um, and as every day went on, my symptoms got worse. The numbness traveled the whole way down my arm into my hands. Like, it's honestly like you've been given an anesthetic. You, it, it feels like your hand is nearly, sw like, or whatever part of your body is swollen. But it looks completely normal. And the pins and needles were horrific. Like, they were they just they didn't they don't go away like they're just constantly there i am um, completely lost like my ability to use my left hand uh i remember like even like doing this my left arm would it would just drop like i could lift it for a second and then it was so heavy i couldn't feel anything in it like i pick up things and i drop them because i didn't know what level of grip i had on them i my coordination was completely gone like i'd go to pick someone up and i'd completely miss it like just couldn't do anything like e even the last time when I tried to like I lost my ability to write in the first attack like picking up a pen it genuinely feels like you've never held a pen in your life you're writing you 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 actually can't write your writing is completely illegible um yeah this time around luckily my eyesight was not affected but like I was still like falling I was unbalanced completely lost my ability to use my left limb or like my left arm and the numbness it, you you cannot feel if someone is touching the back of your head i could probably fall asleep on a brick because i just wouldn't know if it was soft or hard <laughs> it was such a short period of time to have another attack sorry my battery actually keeps dying i'm actually going to speed this up a bit because i realized how long it is but yeah, the second attack happened. It took them 13 days to bring me in for an assessment. I was so stressed. Like I was completely dependent on someone to like make my food for me, to like walk me to the bathroom, to get me a glass of water, like everything I, like I can't do it on my own. Um, so yeah, eventually I was brought in for an assessment. But by that time I was coming back around. It was nowhere near as bad as the first attack because my eyesight was like fine um, but then they're like right we need to um, do your scans again he was like it would be unusual if you had more lesions like I'm, I'm not expecting them to find new lesions 
But again, MS is um, unpredictable. We don't know. They could be there, it's not It's not impossible, but I will be surprised. A couple of weeks later again, I finally got my scans and I got, so I came back around from that. I say that attack like lasted from, I, I was completely fine after about four weeks, between three and four weeks. Anyways, got my results there the other day. Surprise, surprise, there was five new lesions, or six in total, I think. Um, and yeah, they were like, this is an official diagnosis of MS. Um, like obviously you can see that I am, like I seem fine saying it now, but like you've seen that like when I'm talking about, I still do get upset and I still am having days where I'm like, what the fuck is going on in my life? Like how has this happened? Um, but yeah, just madness. Um, so I've given, four booklets that I have to read up on for our treatments, two are tablets, two are self-injectables and yeah I kind of decide myself what one I want to go down or, or like what treatment I want to have or they can also help me if I'm unsure of what one I want to pick. Um, yeah, just absolute madness and that is my story I guess. I, I'm gonna do like a follow up video um of you know how i'm getting on my treatment and like because you have to do like scans like after six months you start your treatment six months after you start your treatment jesus um because they need to see that you have no new lesions forming and they also need to make sure like you haven't had any more like episodes with or without symptoms because you can get silent lesions where lesions are forming but they don't cause symptoms so i've actually got two of those um on different parts of my brain but like i didn't know they happened because they were different they just didn't cause symptoms they were silent um so yeah i hope this has been informative i hope it has brought awareness to people that aren't familiar with the disease to people that are familiar with the disease even just to share what i went through um and yeah if you liked it give it a thumbs up watch it again if you want um subscribe comment below if you want to ask a question i'm very open about it and count your blessings peace